And hello there, my friends. Mr. Water here, once again with another math video. And again, we are going to be looking at a Go Math video, meaning we are going to be looking at the Go Math program, lesson 6.5. We're going to be looking at common denominators and equivalent fractions. Yeah, it's a very cool topic, I must say. And we have our essential question. How can you rewrite a pair of fractions so that they have a common denominator? You know, that's a question I have always had, I want you to know. And today, I think we're going to come to a solution. It says, unlock the problem. Let's unlock it. You can see the combination. It's all locked up. It says, Sarah planted two one-acre gardens. Okay, she's one-acre garden. She's got two of them. Okay. One had three sections. Okay. And the other had four sections. Oh, I see she divided. She plans to divide both gardens into more sections so that they have the same number of equal sized sections. Ooh, I like that word, equal size. How many sections will each garden have? Ooh, I don't know. It's a great question, you know. It's a very good question. Let's take a look and see what we have here. It says you can use a common denominator or a common multiple of two or more denominators to write fractions that name the same part of a whole. So let's look at that. It might be a little bit confusing, but I think that this might just help you out if you find this common denominator and common multiple of two or more denominators to write fractions that name the same part of a whole. Okie dokie. Here's our one garden. Think of this as our one garden with the thirds. If you recall, that we're going to divide it into three sections. And then this is the garden that's been divided into four sections. Here's one acre garden. Here's the other acre garden. It says divide each one-third into fourths and divide each one-fourth into thirds. Ooh. Each of the holes will be divided into the same number, same size parts, twelfths. All right, let's see if that's true. Here's my thirds. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to draw a line across here. Ooh, that was really straight. Mr. Wara, you are incredible. How do you do it? Oh, except it's not very equal, is it? In this case, I can solve that problem too. Come on down. There you go. Come on up. Oh, I can live with that. Can't you? Sure you can. All right, and then we're going to divide this one into thirds. Here's we have fourths. Ah, so we'll say that's about a third. I'll put one right there. Maybe another one about right there. You think it's accurate until after you do it. And then you go, okay, maybe a little slight adjusting. And I see, yes, you know what? They're right. It made 12. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times 3, because this is our wonderful little array. This is our array right here. So here we have 4 going this way. And you can see we have 3 going this way. 4 times 3, 12. This is just the opposite. Here we have, oh, that's not a very nice bracket. And here we have four. So it's four times three. So we do have 12. So both cards will have 12 sections. That says here record. Okay. Multiply the denominators to find a common denominator. A common denominator of one third and one fourth is 12. So if we did multiply the denominators, we would get a common denominator. That will always happen. And that's what this is here too. Common denominator. Write one third and one fourth as equivalent fractions using the common denominator. So if the denominator is the same because it's common, then that means I would put my 12 down there. Now in this case, one third, by just looking at what this was here, this used to be our one third part here, you can see by just looking, now we have four sections. So that's equal to four twelfths. Over here, we had our quarter, which was this much right here. And now you can see we actually have three twelfths because there's one, two, three. Don't you just love things that work out? Hey, hey, that's why I love math. Now, since there's another way. Really? Another way? Well, Mr. Warren, will you show us? Sure, why not? I, I, I have a little bit extra time on my hands. Okay, so make a list of the first eight non-zero multiples of three and four. So they say non-zero, meaning we don't want to start off with zero. So we have three. So if we do multiples of three, three, six, nine. Oh, this is so easy. Twelve, fifteen. 18, 21. Would it be funny if Mr. War made a mistake right here when he said it was so easy? <gasps> Did I make a mistake? I don't think so. Now we have 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and I hope 32. If you notice, it's like 4 times here. In this case, it's 4 times 3. This was 4 times 2. 4 times 4. 4 times 5. Again, math has those wonderful things that we call patterns. 
and patterns are so crucial. That's when we're looking for structure, which happens to be one of our mathematical practices. Which number? Ugh, I forget. But that is very important. Circle the common multiples. Okay. Oh, in this case, they wanted us to circle. I understand. Well, we definitely have the 12. That's a common multiple. 369, we don't have anything else there. So what else do we have here? We have 24. How nice. Okay. So those are called common multiples. And they're just multiples, a certain amount. Now it says use one of the common multiples as a common denominator to write equivalent fractions for one third and one fourth. All right, well, we could use 12, but we already did. Let's use a bigger one. So we could use 24 since they share that common multiple. Now, in this case, you can see that, well, if this is broken up into tw 24 sections, now that's going to be a lot more. Because before it was 4, which made it 12. So almost like double. That would make sense that this would be double. if that double down there. And sure enough, 8 24s, I do believe that's correct. Here we doubled because we had, remember, 4 times 3. So what if we just doubled that? Made that double 6. Would that be 6 24s? I believe so. So both gardens can have 12. And I guess in this case, they made 24 sections. Okay, explain what a common denominator of two fractions represent. Something that we could talk in class. Okay, going to the next page. Now, oh, wow, you saw that, like a snake. You're blinking. Oh, he's such a cute guy. Look at his little tongue. Okay, I don't know what you're doing on my page here, but you are one cool dude. Yes, you are. Yeah, you know what? But I'm going to give you the old shrinky method, if I can. Come on, shrink into a mini snake. Yes. Hey, we're going to leave you sit right there. Thank you very much. Now, it says Lee's common denominator. Okay, well, we were talking about common denominators before, which I understood means it's a denominator that they both have. We had 12 and 24, but now it says least. Least means less. So, the least common denominator. To find the least common denominator of two or more fractions by finding the least common multiple of two or more numbers. Okay, I get it. Use a list. So this is just another way. Find the least common denominator of 3 quarters and 1 sixth. Okay? Use the least common denominator to write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. Again, we're going to list the non-number, I'm sorry, the uh, non-zero multiples of the denominators. Okay, so we have 4. So we're going to say 4, 8, 12. Did we already do this before? But we're like making our list. Seems very similar, of course. And then we could do the 6. We're going to go 6. 12. You already, we already, we have a least one. We kind of already established that from the last one. So the least common denominator of 3 quarters and 1 6 would be, yes, is 12. That's the least common denominator. I had some fun and used 24 in the last one. Step 2. Using the least common denominator, we're going to write an equivalent fraction. Okay, okay. Think, what number multiplied by the denominator of the fraction will result in the least common denominator? So in this case, it's showing us 3 quarters is equal to, and we chose that one as our least common denominator. Okay, fair enough. So that is like saying 4 times 3. So I guess kind of, we're, we, we multiplied by 3 here to get 12. Is it just me, or is just my color is just changing? <laughs> kind of cool. Okay, so that means that would be 12 over here. Now, if I multiply that denominator by... 3. I guess it's only fair to do the same thing at the top. I guess that's what they're doing over here. So 3 times 3 is 9. Therefore, 3 fourths is equal to 9 twelfths because we've multiplied the denominator and the, the numerator by the same quantity. Over here we have 1 sixth. Okay, so we have our denominator. So in order to get our 12 here, we would have had to multiply by a 2. And I'm writing it over here because this is what makes most sense to me. We will have our question mark. So that makes sense. So if I'm multiplying the denominator by 2, the numerator has to be multiplied by 2. Now we're just multiplying straight across, and we get 2 twelfths. Is that right? Well, okay, that is correct. All right, for some reason I was my mind was saying 6 twelfths, but 2 twelfths. So that's 1 sixth. Yeah, that sounds correct. Now, this is 3 quarters can be written as, okay, 9 twelfths. And then over here we have 1 sixth can be written as 2 twelfths. Okay, looking okay. I hope so. Moving on to the next page. See why it's so important to focus. Focus. Okay. Hocus pocus. Hey. Should I start talking like a really old guy now? So there's one more way, okay? Because it's taking me so long to explain. It's like 30 years later. Another way is to use prime factors. Okay, now. Uh, 
I gotta let that one go. <laughs> Use prime factors. I seem to recall we did a lesson on prime factors. Use prime factors to find a common denominator of 5 eighths and 7 twentieths. Then write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. All right, okay, I'll take that challenge. Write each denominator as a product of its prime factors. So the factors of prime factors of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. Now, remember how we did this was when we did our little factor tree, right? You could do 4 times 2. 2 is a prime factor. 4 is not because you could do 2 times 2 and then look like that. What do you know? 2 times 2 times 2, all right? Prime factors of 20, we know are 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, again, well, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20. So you can see how that would be true if we did a factor tree as well. All right, the common denominator of 5 eighths and 7 twentieths is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 equals 40. Okay, I see what they're trying to do there. Hmm, interesting. They might be showing you another way. I was kind of thinking something else. So they, they put box around that. The 3, got it. The 2 were already there, and then the 5. I see they're taking all of it together to give you 40. Now write an equivalent fraction for each fraction, right? So now they've put the 40 already there for you, and there's a 40 over here. Now I'm seeing 8, 5 8, so what would you have to multiply? 8 to get 40, that would be 5, and if you're multiplying the denominator by 5, then you're doing the same up here, so you end up with 25 over 40. And again over here, same thing. 20 times something is going to give you 40. Maybe 2. And then we'd, al we'd also multiply that numerator and we get 14. Okay, we're going to bring this down. Now it says 5 eighths can be rewritten now as 25 over 40. And 7 twentieths can be written as, it could be written as 14 over 40. And that brought us right to the end here, I do believe. As I led you into this wonderful math video and content, I appreciate your focus. It is now time to go. So please, live long and prosper, my friends.